Hello everyone. As you know, I've started a new channel for those of you who are interested only in the, the actual mathematical lessons themselves uh, without the uh, current events and, all, and the broader topics that we cover on this channel. But you're really among the people who come to this channel and the other channel, you're really among those who your minds are rebelling in a good way against the insipid mediocrity that uh, passes for mathematics in our modern schools, if we can even call them schools, because the, me the mediocrity is just so uh, prevalent. But I want to address, I want to make this video with a simple and unflinching truth. You know, or you already know it, that you are being cheated, you're being betrayed, and you're being scammed by a curricula that exalts uh, that exalt calculators over reasoning, spreadsheets or graphic gimmicks over insight, and applications over true, axiomatic, rigorous understanding. Because true mathematics, the, 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 the mathematics that commands intellect and imagination, is not a series of, most people view mathematics as a series of chores, but it's mathematics is a philosophy. It is a pursuit of why, not how quickly can I get the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer? Put your hand down. Every time I hear someone say, what's the answer? What's the answer? I, I, oh. But the, the question you should be asking and answering is, why does this truth hold? What hidden structure lies beneath the symbols? And those who cannot ask why will never glimpse the grand edifice of pure mathematics. They will remain shackled to triviality. We've already seen some of those types on this channel. They come in, they, they rage at what we're doing. They hate it. We're, we'll carry on because the question has to arise, where does, and it's a fair question. You've all asked me this question, so that's why I'm making this video. Where does a young, motivated student begin this noble journey? You don't even have to be a math major to want to have a more, uh, an experience based on rigor and quality. How do you, as for example, I was not a, um, I was not interested in majoring in English. That didn't make me lose interest in any way in knowing proper grammar and, and reading the classics and, and, and wanting to be as, as informed and as well read as possible. So how do you ascend from high school algebra? Many of you are in high school or college to the heights of abstraction without falling prey to the mediocrity of modern pedagogy. And I'm going to tell you plainly, I know it's going to sound cliche, but it is a fact. It is the truth. The books that were published in America before the late 1980s are by far, are by far superior to anything you would get today. So let me begin with the first one. I've mentioned it before, but those of you who are new, you might not have seen that video. You have to begin with the Dolciani, uh, Dolciani, if, if you're Italian, Dolciani series especially uh, book one. Now I'm assuming, let me stop right there. I am assuming right now that most of you watching this video are either in uh, college or high school. If you are not even in high school, then you need to begin with the fundamentals of arithmetic. That's going to go beyond, that arithmetic will go beyond the scope of this video. So my audience today, specifically, if you are watching, you should be either in high school or college because you do need a proper and rigorous arithmetic foundation as well. Sadly, we don't teach arithmetic properly. We don't even do that anymore. We don't even teach the multiplication anymore uh, in schools. But this, let me go back to this. You need, if you are in high school and you have, not, uh, you have not used this book, I feel sorry for you. This is one of the most excellent textbooks that has ever been published uh, in modern times. Of course, the ones from the 19th century are even better. Uh, but my only critique, and it's not really a critique, it's just that it was the limitations of the time. A lot of the books from the 19th century do not include 
uh, proofs or um, they don't discuss things like fields, the field properties or the um, uh, the set theory. So I'm just letting you know, but they are still excellent books in their own right. But more realistically, in a modern sense, this is the best uh, that's out there right now. Now, of course, most this is a very this is very hard to find. And so you're going to have to if you do not find a physical copy, make sure that if you do find one, make sure that it was the, the ones published after 19 after the early 1980s have become rubbish. They've become filled with the ones that were published in 88. 1988, 1989, that's when the decline started. They started publishing a lot of graphics everywhere, applications. It's just, it's all nonsense, really. That's when they started getting unqualified teachers in the classroom as well, that they're not really mathematicians. Uh, I'll tell you a story about that um, soon, uh, later on in the video. But, so you, you should begin with this. If you do not find it, then you can go on archive.org and you can uh, see it online. There are some versions available online. So that's the first thing. We need to begin with the uh, Dolciani series. And you you could begin there. Uh, it's not, a, you'll see if you use the book, and many of you know the book, it's not a mere exercise in um, um, algorithmic manipulation. You, you, you're you going to discover the, the numbers, the variables, that they're not arbitrary. They obey axioms, laws, patterns, and symmetries that are going to make you curious about things. I just used this book recently in a class. I was teaching a class on uh, students who are remedial. They are in really bad shape. They, it's horrible. Uh, not their fault, of course. They, they're just been cheated all their lives. A lot of them have come from the inner cities, for example. And um, they loved this book. See, you didn't imagine because a lot of people said, how can you use that book with people who come from the, you know, literally some of them come from the slums. I said, of course I'm going to use it because truth is truth. Would you say that about the Bible, for example? Would you say, don't read the Bible in the slums? That's ridiculous. You need, we need to spread this idea of rigor all across this land and around the world. The world would be a far better place if there were, if there was a more of a sense of pure mathematicians, pure mathematics. So you, the students learned to see algebra as a living framework, not a set of chores. So factoring, to name an example, it's no longer a mechanical act. It is really, it shows a revelation of structure. Equations are not something you solve for a grade. They really are invitations to understand based on the axioms, based on the properties. And so you're going to see in book one, it, it already trains you to start seeing those laws and patterns that later underpin, much later on, Things like group theory, rings, and fields, all fundamental to, to pure mathematics. So you're going to see the rigor and discipline that a calculator cannot teach you that, or graphing utility or whatever. I don't know what is used now. Uh, Desmos. Um, no real world application can justify just the beauty, the, the pure beauty of the axioms. The second book, by the way, if you pass this one, this one was not as great in the sense that it's not as, um, it's called Modern Algebra Book 2. This is Intermediate Algebra. So those of you taking Algebra 2 or College Algebra, this is pretty good. It's it's a very good book. I'm just saying it's not as, uh, Book 1 is by far considered to be superior. But this one covers also the fundamentals. I quite like it a lot, and I often use it. I use it here at City Tutoring for, for the quizzes for my students. They know it. They have to have it. Now, those, if they do not have the physical copy, there's still a copy, again, on archive.org. And I recently contacted the publisher, and uh, I asked about the copyright. Um, and no, they do have a copyright on it. So we are not authorized, unfortunately, because of copyright laws, uh, which I understand, of course, because it is private property. So we, we are not authorized to, to, um, to print this uh, and distribute it. Uh, in our own way. So uh, be creative. Uh, maybe you can, if you if you know someone who has the book, maybe you can take notes, etc. But uh, it is restricted. The copyright is restricted. So that's why we cannot publish it. Uh, so that's the second one. So you also have, I don't have it here with me. There is uh, Dolciani's Geometry with Jurgensen. And, but it's a really good book as well. Though Again, the one from the 1980s. You have reflections, rotations, the, the, all the standard curricula 
for uh, for geometry. And they don't show you tricks. They show you windows into order. And so I like that Dolciani, unlike educators today, demands reasoning. You learn to construct. You start in book one. They don't really talk about, uh, she doesn't really talk about proofs in book one, but you already start to be exposed to the mathematical laws and you start to see relationships and to appreciate the elegance of structure. So each theorem becomes not a task, but uh, it, it's, it builds to the next one. Uh, the other, uh, the third book that I have here, once you pass book one and book two, this is by far the best I've said it before on this channel. This is the best pre-calculus textbook ever written for high school students, or even for you, those of you, I, I am guarantee you that those of you so-called college students would not be able to do well with this book unless you are exposed to the kind of instruction that it requires. So that's why we have places like City Tutoring. But this book is amazing. I mean, it just has, uh, if you compare it to today, it starts with uh, statements and sets in mathematics. You have to begin with sets. If you want to have pure mathematics, if you want to be a pure mathematician, you must have an understanding of sets and axioms. So they begin in chapter one, statement and sets, statements and sets in mathematics. Then in chapter two, ordered fields. And then by chapter three, you start getting into an amazing, the, the most powerful mathematical induction, sequences and series. And then uh, they even discussed uh, uh, Richard Dedekind. How many of you high school students have ever heard of Richard Dedekind? I doubt it very much. Even some of you in college have not. If you're a math major, let me know if you've heard of at least Dedekind. I hope so in your classes. That I know they mention in most decent programs, but you have to wait until college for the most part. Uh, chapter four, uh, the algebra of vectors. Chapter five talks about plain analytic geometry of points and lines. Then they go functions, complex numbers, polynomial functions. I mean, it's just a, a great book. You can also get it online and you can buy a copy if it's available. I had a, a gentleman the other day, he wrote, uh, he said he found a copy. I don't know where, uh, I, I, I can't remember where he did mention where, but it was only $5. I found that amazing. Just, I don't know if I believe that, but that's quite a blessing. Um, what else? So we're living in an era that is dominated by calculators and all this tech. But so these books are really revolutionary acts if you do that, because it teaches you to ask why, to interrogate, to doubt, uh, to construct, and it prepares you for abstraction. That is the key to pure mathematics for higher algebra, for analysis. There are also other good books out there. Uh, for example, Hall and Knight. The Indian students know that. I know a lot of people from, um, I know a lot of students in India. Uh, they've told me they use Hall and Knight. Higher Algebra by Hall and Knight. I, I love that book as well. I don't have a copy with me here, though. I had it in my other office. Um, so why do you have to begin here? Because as I've said before many times, pure mathematics is not a sprint to the answer. If you just want to have an answer, this is not the place for you. It is a slow, deliberate ascent of reason. You begin with algebra, you understand structure, you move on to geometry, and you develop intuition that is aligned with logic. Then you master reasoning to equip your mind for the abstractions that follow, because you're, you're going to have to do proofs. So if you take together these books, they, they really provide the scaffolding upon which all higher math is built, and they, they demand the rigor. So they are the antidote to triviality the shield against the mindless practicality that infects contemporary classrooms all across this country. In Europe, uh, which in many countries in Europe, they have by far a much better mathematical program than we do. Uh, they still use that, that approach. It's the set theory approach. You have to be abstract. So if you're weary of watered down courses, if you scoff, if you've ever, uh, because that happened, that's how I got into mathematics. I, I remember in high school, I would scoff at calculators around me and their accomplices. And you should take up Dolciani, read it diligently, solve the exercises, ask why and, uh, and when. The answer is not forthcoming, invent it. Delight in the proof. Revel in structure and, and knowing that you are right. 
because mathematics in its purest form is a battlefield of the mind. Only those who question, who reason, who pursue understanding for its own sake shall prevail. So you're not merely going, it's not about following mathematics, it's about commanding it. And you shall see the world not as it appears, but as it must necessarily be through the eyes of mathematical reason, which is the reasoning of God himself. So it's not a tool for convenience. That's not what math is about. It's not a ticket to a career, uh, although for some people it is. But I'm saying you should not view it in that way. You should not study math only because you want a career. You should study math if you enjoy it, if you, if for the, the pleasure in the proof, as G.H. Hardy used to say. And it's not a subject to endure. It is a life of inquiry, a pursuit of truth, a grand adventure reserved for the bold, the curious, and the fearless. By the way, uh, you, I also recommend a book. It's called How to Read and Do Proofs by Daniel Solo. It's a little bit hard to find because it's older, but it's, it is a great book You because you do need to learn how to read and do proofs. Modern introductory analysis mentions uh, let me see where it was. They do mention some, they give you examples of proofs, but I don't remember, I don't recall. Let's see here. They do mention proofs by uh, contradiction, direct and indirect. So they do mention that, but it's not an exhaustive topic about on how to actually prove. The other thing I wanted to mention, by the way, this is just kind of a side note, but I have this book here. Introduction to Logic by Irving Kopi. Kopi. This is a very good book, the seventh edition. If anybody in the audience wants to buy a copy, I am downsizing because I have I already have a lot of uh, books in my library. But this one, if, if you want it, let me know. Offer, make an offer, and we'll see. You can email me or you can let me know in the comments. If this is Introduction to Logic, not mathematical logic, but this is a standard um, logic book that would have been used in uh, college classes before. But anyway, thank you all. I hope this video was helpful. And like I said, this is the foundation. This is a, a video because someone requested that I show them chronologically how, how should they begin to approach pure mathematics from scratch. So this is the those are the foundations. And so on the other channel, I'm going to post this video as well. And uh, I will on the other channel, I will also uh, if you're watching this from City Tutoring Maths, on the other channel, which I will link down below, I will also cover lessons as well in Pure Mathematics. If you are watching this video from Pure Mathematics channel, this has also been published um, on the main channel. Thank you all.